Raise your hand if you've ever felt excluded. Keep your hand up if you've ever felt like you didn't fit in. Keep your hand up if obstacles have ever been placed in your way. And keep your hand up if someone has judged you for who you are. That's pretty much everyone. <laughs> Thank you. You see, I was just 16 when I collected my first social value judgment label, teenage mum. I didn't fit into the Catholic school that I attended. In actual fact, I didn't even fit in the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I brought shame to the school, and I was officially declared a health and safety risk. But I lost contact with all of my friends. See, they didn't have Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram back then. In actual fact, they didn't even have the World Wide Web. Believe that. And yet, I didn't fit in with the yummy mummies either. I was a spotty teenage mum with a very bad perm. I remember sitting in the local village hall as I took my exams in isolation. The disapproving looks as I pushed my beautiful daughter down the high street in her pushchair. And then came the comments. Oh. That's it. She's ruined her life. She's never going to make anything of herself. I'm so disappointed. And whilst these words cut deep, and in truth, I still bear the scars today, I was determined not to be restricted by the value judgments that others had levied at me. And so I pushed on, I studied at evening classes because learning was really important to me. I juggled family life and I entered the world of work and endeavoured to climb the corporate ladder. But at every single stage, it just felt so much harder than others appeared to endure. And one particular memorable moment occurred for me when I finally plucked up the courage to raise the issue with my boss about the disparity in pay, having discovered that my male colleagues were paid almost twice my salary. To be patted on the arm and told, Teresa, the boys are older than you. So why am I telling you this? Well, I don't want pity, and I'm not even telling you to shame those for their actions. I share my experience with you in the spirit of inclusion. You see, I know what it feels like when you don't fit in. I know what it feels like to be excluded, and I know what it's like to overcome adversity, and I also know what it's like to be judged by others. But I also recognize that my life experience is totally different to you, and to you, and to you. But it's these life experiences that make us who we are and our uniqueness. It's this uniqueness that creates the rich tapestry of life. And when we look at uniqueness as an alternative way, then it's unique for that creates culinary delights and vibrancies of masterpieces. So why is it then that when we hear the words diversity and inclusion, they offer excitement, hope and possibilities for some, and yet strike up fear, dread, anger, resentment, and fatigue in others. I don't mean fatigue from a physical exhaustion sense. It's almost that there's a boredom, a sort of mental fatigue. I have witnessed people rolling their eyes, shrugging their shoulders, and raising their hands when the words diversity and inclusion are mentioned. 
there's a sort of disassociation, a stepping away, almost as though diversity and inclusion is nothing to do with them. And yet at the same time, there's this gravitational pull towards the corporate world, suggesting that these words are only associated with corporate targets and tick boxes and labels and initiatives often fail to gain any traction. This dichotomy is real. But are we really tired? of diversity and inclusion. <coughs> I want to leave this world a better place. And I'm passionate about playing my role in creating the change that I want to see. And so I'm on this path to initiate a paradigm shift, to reframe and energize our thinking around diversity and inclusion. And so I have created a framework called Tribe. I want us to be able to move away from fear and fatigue and move into vitality and excitement. So why Tribe? Well, we belong to a tribe. And to be clear, I'm not talking about a gang. I'm talking about family and friends and communities and places and environments where we are encouraged and inspired to be our best. Our role within these tribes will constantly change as we ourselves grow and develop. And whilst in truth, I have created this framework for the corporate world to enable them to move forward on their diversity and inclusion journeys with confidence this model is as applicable to every aspect of your lives. So let me tell you a story, and I'll give you five things to take away. My husband and I love watching house building and home renovation programs. In actual fact, I think we've watched them all at least three times over from projects all over the world. But there's one particular program that stands out for me. It focuses on the creation of a community. This project started 10 years ago when a regional council responded positively to a proposal put forward by 10 pioneering house builders. Well, nothing new there, you might say. However, these weren't large corporations building traditional homes. No, this was a community of 10 residents that were spearheading buildings, homes that met their dreams, that were unique for them and met their requirements. All restrictions were removed, including egos. The only thing that they had to comply with was safety. The rest was entirely up to them. The shape, the size, the materials used was as unique as the reason for them building these homes. And each and every episode just showcased the array of architectural diversity. But at the same time, week after week, you could see and feel the vitality and excitement as these builders created a community. They set aside their judgments of each other. They became curious about their difference. They learned from each other, and they helped each other to build their dream homes. For me, this was a beautiful demonstration of diversity and inclusion. You see, through building their dream homes, these residents showed with ease the power of inclusion and the richness of diversity. It was nothing to do with boardrooms and tick boxes and targets. And it was very evident from the show that in order to meet their needs, there was not a one-size-fits-all. It was a wonderful demonstration of coming together, but it was about a way of being. So take a moment. Imagine a world where you are valued for your unique gifts 
and talents. Where restrictions are lifted and replaced with vitality and excitement. Where judgments don't exist anymore. Instead, there's a hunger for learning and a celebration for what you can do as opposed to what you can't. It's beautiful, isn't it? But it's your vision and your vision alone, so we cannot look to others to create this for us or to launch initiatives on the hope that they will provide a solution for us. Otherwise, we will become frustrated and resentful and even fatigued. So I leave this with you. Next time you hear the words diversity and inclusion, I invite you to take stock. I invite you to look at what you see and what you hear and what you feel. What do you notice about yourself and the environment around you? I invite you to raise awareness. Do you believe in the richness of diversity and the power of inclusion? Do you understand the role and contribution that you play? Inspire and involve. For me, ask yourself, what enables you to shine? And what is it that you do to enable others to step into their brilliance? When we talk about Build for the Future, ask yourselves, what can you do to educate others about your difference? And how can you break with traditions? Remembering that these traditions may have been right previously, but just question, do they serve us for our modern day society? And finally, embed. This is so important for me. Diversity and inclusion is not the role of one, but it's the coming together of many. It's through the actions that we all take each and every day, the choices that we make, the ability to be open to change, to celebrate our difference, and to inspire others to keep going along the way. I want to leave the world a better place than when I arrived. And as a mother and a granny, although I do like to be called Nana, I have a level of responsibility to stand on the shoulders of those who have championed change before me. I want to be a beacon of possibilities, to inspire others to widen the conversation about diversity and inclusion, and to bring energy and excitement to the gifts that it holds. I know the role and contribution that I play in bringing about this paradigm shift. My challenge to you is, what will you do? next. Thank you.